I have to say I was a little bit shocked when speaking with a couple of my Amerikanski subscribers and finding out that they don't really know why a dollar is valuable. Apparently, they've not read about it in school, you don't really find this topic being approached in the mainstream media, and politicians don't talk about it either. So it was a little bit astonishing and I thought that, okay, you know what, I'll make a video. I'll make a video and I'll try to explain the best I can so that people can understand why a dollar has value. Now, up till recently, and by recently I mean 1971, the dollar was backed by gold. What this means is that anyone that had a dollar could theoretically go to the government and ask to exchange that dollar for gold which means that the government could only print as much money as it had gold in its reserves. However, on August the 15th, 1971, President Nixon appears on the television and makes this statement. The third indispensable element in building the new prosperity is closely related to creating new jobs and halting inflation. We must protect the position of the American dollar as a pillar of monetary stability around the world. In the past seven years, there's been an average of one international monetary crisis every year. Now, who gains from these crises? Not the working man, not the investor, not the real producers of wealth. The gainers are the international money speculators. Because they thrive on crises, they help to create them. In recent weeks, the speculators have been waging an all-out war on the American dollar. The strength of a nation's currency is based on the strength of that nation's economy. And the American economy is by far the strongest in the world. Accordingly, I have directed the Secretary of the Treasury to take the action necessary to defend the dollar against the speculators. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. Now, what is this action, which is very technical, what does it mean for you? Let me lay to, re lay to rest the bugaboo of what is called devaluation. If you want to buy a foreign car or take a trip abroad, market conditions may cause your dollar to buy slightly less. But if you are among the overwhelming majority of Americans who buy American-made products in America, your dollar will be worth just as much tomorrow as it is today. The effect of this action, in other words, will be to stabilize the dollar. Now, this action will not win us any friends among the international money traders. But our primary concern is with the American workers and with fair competition around the world. So what Nixon is saying here is that he wants the American government to have the ability to print as much money as they want. But obviously, if the dollar is not backed by gold or any value, it is just paper, isn't it? So how is it that the dollar will still have value? Well, people have to pay taxes. And when you pay taxes, you have to pay them in dollars. You can't pay them in anything else. You can't pay them in rubles, you can't pay them in marks, and you can't pay them in gold. Now, if you don't pay your taxes, according to the United States law, the punishment is quite severe. It is imprisonment. And as such, people have to get dollars in order to avoid going to prison so that they can pay their taxes. So for the American people, the value of the dollar is that that you have to pay taxes to the government. But now comes the second question. So the dollar has a value for the American. The American needs to get it in order to get the government not to arrest them so that they pay taxes. But why exactly would, I don't know, a British person give a crap about a dollar? He doesn't need to pay taxes to the American government. For him, it's just worthless paper, isn't it? Well... Yes and no. I mean, it still has some value. You can still go to the United States and travel abroad and spend the dollars there. So technically, it's not worthless because the people in the U.S. will buy dollars from you because they have to pay taxes to the U.S. government. But it's not as valuable as it used to be. 
Because before, you could just trade it in gold, and you can spend that gold in order to transition it to Great British Pounds, and you could then spend it in your country. So, obviously, Nixon is pointing out that by doing this, the price of foreign goods is going to skyrocket. Uh, the value of a dollar is going to lose drastically in the international scale, but it's still going to remain the same within the U.S. market, according to Nixon, at least. However, the United States has found a way in order to make the dollar valuable for everyone around the world. The way they have managed to do this is by signing agreements with Middle Eastern nations that have vast amount of oil. Nations such as Saudi Arabia, the United Emirates, Oman and Qatar. Meaning that if you want to buy oil from Saudi Arabia, you have to pay for it in US dollars. And because oil is such an important resource, to the point where any first world economy can't live without oil, nations from around the world need to get US dollars in order to be able to purchase oil from these countries. And in the language of economists, this is called the petrodollar. A petrodollar is a United States dollar earned by a country through the sales of petroleum. Now, all of this also includes the IMF and to a concept that's called the petrodollar recycling system. And as I'm saying, like this video is just meant to be a very simplified version for people to understand what I'm talking about. But if you want to read more, just Google the petrodollar, Google petrodollar recycling system, IMF, and you'll find out more about how the system works. But to oversimplify and to recap, countries that are mass producers of oil, such as Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the United Emirates, get military protection from the United States against their enemies, and in exchange, the US forces them to only sell their oil in US dollars. And the surplus is recycled into the US Treasury. And now you kind of understand the geopolitical strategy of the US in the Middle East. Whenever you have a leader that doesn't want to sell its oil in the US dollars and thus jeopardizes the value of the dollar internationally, the US will usually find some reason to invade. Now, because explaining this economic principle to the masses is quite difficult, most people probably don't even care about the value of a dollar internationally, the US government, along with the mainstream media, has to beat the war drums and find some other reason to invade Middle Eastern nations, such as we're going to look for weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, or my favorite one. They took the babies out of the incubators. Now, the interesting thing is that we can look into the past and we can see how many times the US went to war in the Middle East under false pretenses. Like, for example, we know for sure that there were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. But that didn't matter because then it was politically incorrect to say something like this. It was politically incorrect to be against the war. And most of the news reports and events surrounding that time have been thrown into the memory hole. The media doesn't want to talk about them at all. And this is why they're also pissed off because of the internet. There is that saying that the internet is forever, meaning you can archive things. We can actually go back in time and see what the mainstream media used to say during that period. Something that you couldn't do back then. Unless you are a crazy person that would record everything on a VCR and you'd have like thousands of tapes in your house and you, you had like this conspiracy theorist type of room where you're like, oh, this is what the mainstream media said on that fateful day. Uh, but yeah, now you can basically look back into the past and you can see the cycle constantly repeating itself. Whenever a leader in the Middle East comes up and doesn't agree or jeopardizes the uh, petrodollar system, then the United States will go and spread democracy to that country. Um, what is also interesting to point out is Syria. Now, Syria doesn't have oil. However, through their country, you can have a pipeline that can transport oil from neighboring nations into Europe. And obviously, if the Russians would start selling oil in rubles, that would jeopardize the petrodollar. Is this evil? Well, it's up to you to decide, I guess. Like, if you live in America, the question is, like, do you value your currency? Do you think that the government should defend the value of your dollars? Because if the petrodollar scheme falls, then your money becomes worthless paper to anyone outside of the United States. And it's not only that, the consequences might be even more disastrous. Uh, depending how the petrodollar falls, like if it happens overnight or if it happens slowly, 
Uh, you need to take into account that no nation around the world, as far as I'm aware, uses the gold standard anymore. Most nations have their currency backed on the US dollar. So if the US dollar becomes worthless paper, well, guess what happens to someone else's money from outside the US? Um, so the scheme should work like this. Uh, as the demand for oil increases, the demand for dollars increases, and thus the standard of the living in the United States increases. But this also highlights the fragility of the system because, heaven forbid, tomorrow someone invents an alternative energy source. If someone would manage to somehow come with something else than oil, like it happened back when people were using coal and someone discovered electricity, holy shit, like this, this is generally going to be a person that's going to have their life at risk because I'm pretty sure he's going to get assassinated. And this also shows why the United States will always back Saudi Arabia, despite of the difference in values and the government system that they have and the human rights abuses, the United States will always turn a blind eye to nations like Qatar because they have the interest. Like Qatar and Saudi Arabia do have the power to tank the United States if they so desire. So there are a lot of conversations that can take place from this, conversations that I highly doubt you will find in the mainstream media, conversations that I highly doubt you will find in schools, high schools or universities. It's a very fragile system that started in 1971, so it's not even that long ago. And it is something that is unexplored by humanity. We don't know where this will lead. Um, so. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Tell me if you like this video and don't forget to, to subscribe. If you want to support me, I, I got a PayPal and stuff like that. So uh, feel free to do so. And I'll see you guys in about six hours when I start to do my live stream on my secondary channel.